Asalaamu Alaikum guys, welcome back to Inspire FM. This is the second video of me being in Japan and meeting the Japanese Muslims over there. This video is about Muslims in Japan. Uh, so literally their struggles, uh, their backgrounds, what they did, uh, their current uh, situations, and basically how their life is uh, as a Muslim living in uh, modern day Japan. As you can imagine, it's very different from Muslims living here, migrating all the way from Pakistan, Bangladesh, and moving all the way here to England. And I interviewed uh, two Muslims there, uh, one of them a good family friend, uh, Brother Mustaq, and another Muslim who was uh, actually the chairman of the mosque, which I am very honored to have uh, been able to interview him. Alhamdulillah, both of them gave really good answers to my questions during the interview. So I hope you guys enjoy the video. Make sure to subscribe to Inspire FM and check out my channel, Japanimation. I mainly do videos on parkour and I've done a few videos on Japanese stuff. So make sure to check out my channel. So without further ado, let's go straight into the video. Sapporo, the fifth largest city in Japan, with a population of just under 2 million. It is well known for its annual winter snow festival held in February. The city is located on the northern island of Hokkaido, surrounded by the mountains and sea. Hokkaido has been recognized as part of Japan for only 150 years. Out of the 2 million people living in Sapporo, there are only 200 Muslims, a percentage of 0.01% of the population. Most of these Muslims originate from countries such as Indonesia, Egypt, Pakistan and Malaysia. The Japanese have little or no knowledge of Islam. This is mostly due to the ban of religious education, so their only source of knowledge comes from the media or the internet. My name is Abdul Qadir, and I am visiting Japan to see my grandmother who lives here in Sapporo. I met the small Muslim community there at the only mosque in Sapporo, one of two in Hokkaido. There are only 61 mosques built in Japan. This mosque is called Sapporo Masjid, and it has been around for 25 years. I got the chance to interview the founder and the current chairman of the mosque regarding Muslims in Japan. Assalamu alaikum brother. Alaikum uh, salam. Can you please introduce yourself and what relation you have to the mosque? Okay. Uh, Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, my name is August. Uh, I was born in Indonesia, but I am a Japan uh, citizen. Uh, how do the Japanese treat you and how do you feel in the society, Japanese society? Okay. Uh, Japanese society is uh, always welcome. Basically, they are uh, very honest, very hospitable on, on uh, welcoming people from uh, around the world and even from the uh, Muslim countries they are very welcome mm. yes. so have you ever felt Islamophobia or been have you ever been treated as a foreigner uh, Islamophobia is actually in Hokkaido especially in Hokkaido is less than uh, compared to other place but uh, what I feel is uh, so far is uh, there's not, no such thing like Islamophobia mm. um, because why? Because uh, Japanese people is a kind of uh, shy. I mean, they can they cannot uh, ex you know express their feeling about uh, one religion or one society. So they just uh, shy and they don't want to other people know they, their feeling. But uh, basically, uh, in Japan, especially in Hokkaido, they are very welcoming. The Japanese society is very welcoming. So, have you ever faced? Islamophobia, or have you ever been treated as a foreigner? We always treat every day as a uh, as a foreigner. They would never trust me, mm. and I'm always trying to tell them, say, please, you know, uh, my uh, sons are the motor trader. My younger son is the, is the biggest motor company in Hokkaido, and uh, from uh, what he tells me, you people are wasting your money, and just listen to me and try and save your money, but they wouldn't listen to me because you're a foreigner. A foreigner doesn't know anything better than us. Mm. So it means that they don't trust us. So I said, please trust a foreigner sometimes. Mm. You don't have to trust a foreigner always. Mm. But uh, what I'm trying to advise you is to save your money because in the future, money is not going to be coming so easy to you guys. When you first arrived in Japan, yes. did you have any difficulties practicing your faith? Yes, yes. Uh, the first time I came to Japan, I feel a bit uh, difficult on practicing uh, my my religion, especially it, it is not uh, common in Japan. Especially if, if I want to go for pray, uh, let's say like uh, I, I have to pray maybe in the side road, then some people will look at me, but actually they they won't bother me. Mm. They won't bother me, but uh, it's actually kind of uh, quite uh, challenging. But uh, alhamdulillah. Uh, nowadays, is um, many uh, Japanese understand about the uh, Islam and uh, Islamic culture. Mm -hmm. How difficult is it 
living in Japan as a Muslim? Before it was difficult, but uh, people are starting to realize that there are different cultures, and then they they they, they have more contact with us now. Mm. But uh, we're now coming up against a wall where these uh, uh, Islamic groups, you know, like you have these ISIS and all these funny guys, they're coming up and they're saying that they, they're Muslims. Now this is, uh, is hampering us. It's uh, making, in fact, it's making my work difficult. We need a mosque here. We need uh, somebody to sell us the land. And if these people start getting afraid or they think that we are a terrorist organization, they're not going to sell us the land. Mm. Which uh, happened to me when we first got our, uh, our first, uh, we rented our first place. They refused to rent us a place because they said we belong to Bin Laden. So when I look back, man, it was a terrible experience. And nobody wanted to rent us a place because we're all Bin Laden's uh, family. Now you have this ISIS thing, and it's uh, it's affecting us. I uh, I was refused once already. They look, we do not want to sell to you. It's because uh, we do not want trouble. So I tried to ask them, what trouble are you talking about? No, no, we just don't want trouble. So when it comes to eating, yes. uh, is it hard to find halal food, especially when there's they usually add uh, alcohol? Yes, some foods. Yes, it is actually quite uh, challenging to find uh, halal food. But uh, before, uh, when I first came to Japan, I don't understand about uh, what is ingredients of the food. And un until a uh, few years uh, living here, then I understand what is uh, ingredients of the food. And from at that point, then I'll be more uh, careful. Mm. So, but nowadays we have a, a many uh, tourists from Islamic country. Mm. So uh, the government and also the NPO they try uh, to to give uh, education to show them to the any kind of establishment, restaurant, and also hotels that the Islamic. Uh, tourists from Islamic country they need a halal food uh, is and also need a place to uh, make a salad and etc so but uh, since uh, I have mentioned that they are very welcoming mm. and uh, so far is uh, no uh, problem mm. yes. so how long have you lived here I've been living uh, for uh, 11 years 11 years, yes, 11 years. Do you have any troubles with the language? L any language barriers? Of course, there is a language barrier because uh, I I think uh, Japanese is quite difficult. Mm. Yeah, quite difficult I I, uh, compared to other languages. But nowadays, uh, I I think we, we have so many applications. We have so many things that we can use to translate uh, for this uh, language barrier things. Mm. So. When you first came here from Indonesia, yes, right, uh, did you understand Japanese, or did you just come here without knowing much Japanese? Okay, uh, I, I married to Japanese, but mm. uh, after marriage, I, I live in Indonesia for a while. So I moved uh, to Japan because uh, I have a children. Then uh, mm. my my wife uh, uh, thought that uh, it is better to raise the children in in Japan. Mm. Uh, on, from their opinion, so uh, uh, it's actually I, I cannot speak uh, Japanese. I cannot speak Japanese. Even I I learn I study Japanese, but maybe because uh, to me uh, it was less interesting to learn Japanese. Uh, quite difficult for me, so uh, I wasn't uh, really prepared on, on on learning the language. But after moving here. Then I, I study a uh, lot. I mean, uh, I can more uh, practice. Mm. Yeah. So, what made you come to Japan? I lived uh, in uh, India for a while. And then my uh, grandparents told me, "Say, you know, you should go to Japan. We have uh, friends in Hokkaido, and uh, go there. And you should." Uh, try and uh, do something, this. maybe you could study there. Say, but what, what, what am I going to study? 
Mm. Go into some. Uh, you like to become an architecture. See me. Come on, give me a break. Uh, I'm not that uh, made for that. Mm. See, but it's our wish. Mm. So I came here, and I took that up. And when I finished, uh, I decided to go into business. You know, Indians like business. Mm. So I started my own uh, language center, and then I built it up, and uh, it became a cultural center. So right now I own a cultural center, and uh, I have about 700 students. But uh, I'm not anybody special, I'm not made for it, it's just that I'm very lucky. What do you think is the best and the worst part of living in Japan? The, the best part of Japan... Hmm, the best part for me is... Uh, I can move freely, you know. I have no uh, worries of anything. I want to go camping, I go camping. I want to go shopping, I go shopping. If I want to eat halal food, I can find halal food. I have everything here. I don't miss Zimbabwe at all. But the, the bad part of it is that the society is not an open society, mm. which everybody knows they, they keep to themselves. Mm. You can have a Japanese friend for a hundred years, but you won't know what's behind him. You won't, you, you won't even meet his family. You, you won't even know who his children are. It's totally two different worlds. So they're, they're very close to people. They, they don't open up to their friends. You, you don't know whether he is really your friend or not. Mm. This is the bad part of them. But I still like them. Mm. I have a lot of bad parts and they like me. The best part of Japan is uh, Japan is uh, very hospital, uh, very welcoming people and uh, very helpful and even the government is also helpful yeah they're welcoming us but uh, the worst part is uh, the lack of knowledge mm -hmm. yeah still uh, lack of knowledge about Islam still lack of knowledge on how to deal with uh, Islamic people mm -hmm. yeah but uh, basically they, they can learn they mm -hmm. can learn and of course uh, this is also we can that's why uh, we make this masjid is beside the place uh, for uh, our uh, brother and sister in Islam to make a dakwah, to make a ritual, uh, uh, salat, and etc. But we also need to. Uh, this is the center of uh, for Islamic studies mm. in the future for Islamic studies. So, so we hope by uh, by uh, making this society bigger. Uh, with a uh, more representative uh, building, then we can uh, invite uh, more uh, uh, Japanese to learn about Islam. So mm. we try uh, not to make a misunderstanding yeah. about Islam. This is the main point about mm. uh, our society. Do you think that part of the problem that Japanese don't know much about Islam is because they don't teach religious education? Yes, uh, this is maybe one point. Uh, because we know, uh, as my, I saw my children, uh, school uh, they, they don't have uh, about uh, teaching about uh, uh, religion in, in, in their curriculum mm. uh, so this is maybe one point so many of Japanese they they're not uh, interest on, on about religion mm. okay Jazakullah for that brother thank you very much thank, thank, you, thank you very, very much, much. The pleasure was much. Thank, you. thank you very much Jazakullah Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure to like, comment and subscribe to Inspire FM and please check out my channel and inshallah I'll see you guys in the next video.